Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Manners. I teach French horn here at GCU. I'm really happy that you've decided to audition for this year's Arizona Regional and All-State Bands. Uh, hopefully this, the information in this video can be helpful to you as you prepare your audition. Um, some general ideas, uh, definitely before your audition, you wanna make sure that you get a good night's sleep, drink lots of water, have a good breakfast, and feel nice and comfortable um, as you go into audition. I, I recommend dressing up. I think you play better when you're dressed up and you, you feel more confident in, in your playing ability that way. Also, I would strongly advise you when you're practicing these uh, to consider doing some physical exercise right before you play to elevate your heart rate because when you audition for this band, you're probably gonna be nervous and you're not as comfortable as you are sitting in your bedroom practicing normally. So I would encourage you maybe do 20 jumping jacks um, as you're preparing to play these just to kind of simulate what it's gonna be like when you're actually in the audition room. So I'm gonna walk you through some things that, that I found as I was preparing these etudes and hopefully you can find some benefit in that. So with number one, number one is marked martial, which is, is a march-like style. And we really want to bring that out of this etude as much as possible. So it's marked marcato uh, at the beginning, which is a marked style. And so I tried to or, uh, show that in my playing throughout this. Definitely when you get to the end of the first line, it's marked legato, and there needs to be a definite contrast between the, the uh, marcato section and the legato section. Smooth playing, very broad tongue throughout uh, the second line. And then really the marcato section returns at the end of this. You'll notice when the accents start pop popping back up. Another thing that I noticed with this one is that the triplet uh, figure and also the dotted eighth sixteenth. We need to make sure that we're making a difference between those rhythmically, so that the dotted eighth note 
has uh, three quarters of the beat and one quarter of the beat for the 16th note, the triplets need to be three even parts. And those shouldn't be roughly the same thing. So a lot of students, uh, when they come in, some, sound something like this. <laughs> So at the beginning, we really want to make sure that the first note out of the two is three times the length of the second note. So without the subdivision, that important rhythmic thing right off the bat helps you as you're beginning this, and it lets the judge know that you actually do understand the rhythm that's going on here. A couple other things. Um, this, this etude can be very robotic because it's very march-like, and so I want to encourage you to bring out as much musicality as you can in it. Don't make it robotic. Um, make things musical as much as possible. And lastly, watch out for the key signature on this one. D-flat and A-flat are especially problematic with this one. Also, one last thing. The articulation on the second measure in the last line, watch out for those staccatos because it can be a little bit tricky. Number two. Uh, is the adagietto. Uh, it's it's a, a slower etude. We're in uh, the key of B minor here, and so it gives kind of a dark quality to this one. Um, definitely watch out for the articulation in this. There's a lot of different things, but one of the most important things that's in this is a combination of a tenuto and a staccato, the dash and the dot on the same note. So we want to make sure that we are honoring both of those. The note needs to be a little bit longer, but there's still plenty of separation. Da, ta, 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 as you're playing that. Definitely the slurs are really, really important on this as you have these octave things. Da, 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 da. So that we're actually getting the correct articulation there. Um, there's also on this one two really important ritardandos, one towards the end of the second line. Uh, and it actually leads into an a tempo on the last measure of the second line. So make sure that you're slowing down into that measure. And then when you hit the a tempo, it goes back to the original speed. And also there's a writ at the very end of this and needs to kind of wind down uh, this particular A2. Also watch dynamics. There's a crescendo poco a poco. So meaning uh, little by little at the beginning of the second line, make sure that you're actually honoring that as you go. Also, just for me personally, I found that the breath mark at the beginning of the third line is really, really important. And so please make sure that you're actually honoring that or else you will not have enough air to finish out this one. So um, the notes on the last line can be a little bit tricky too, especially once you get to the 16th note. So definitely take those slow at first and make sure you're practicing um, as much as you can at a slower tempo. And also uh, the two triplets towards the end of the, the last line really important that we get those exact notes. Keep in mind E sharp is the same as F natural on those. And then keep in mind on the second triplet that there is a C sharp that's in the key signature as well as an A sharp, which is the same fingering as B flat. Number three. Um, with number three, it's marked giocoso, which uh, literally means humorously. And so we want to make sure that we're getting kind of this humorous quality to this. It should, it should feel kind of fun a little bit. Yum, pa -tum, pum, pum, pum. It would be wrong to play this super heavy and kind of dark sounding. So we want to make this kind of bright and, and, uh, and feel uh, just somewhat fun. Definitely bring out the fact that this is in 6 8 and that we should be feeling this in, in a two pulse every time. Yum, pa pum, 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 pum. You would be wrong to do this, to, to feel like this is a six, six eighth note feel. One, two, and three, four, five, six, and really emphasize each of those six beats. That's gonna lose a lot of the, the humorous feel that we're going for. So you wanna make sure that you are really accenting uh, the first and the fourth eighth notes in every measure. And you'll notice if you look at this, a lot of times he has uh, those notes accented already in your part. So you wanna bring that out as much as possible. Another thing that's tricky in this is at the beginning of the last line, there's an articulation measure where we do two, two slurred notes followed by one staccato note. Um, definitely bring that out in your playing. And then at the end of this line, we have this long crescendo where he has different signposts. He starts mezzo piano, then we crescendo to mezzo forte, forte to fortissimo. And we wanna make sure that we're getting all of those dynamic levels and that we hit those. And definitely there is a, a, a real crescendo that happens over the last uh, line. 
Um, make sure that you're using a light tongue as much as possible in this. We, that will, again, help kind of this humorous style. Um, we don't want to have um, heavy air at all in this as much as possible. With number four, which is uh, one of the Allstate Etudes, definitely with this one, we want to stay in a half note feel. Just like number three, where we're counting uh, in two, uh, this, this particular etude is in three, two, and then switches to four, two. So we want to make sure that we always visualize this in those half note pulses. And what's nice is, generally speaking, he has four eighth notes barred together. Those are, that's the half note every time. So as much as possible, feel the, the three. So that we don't get stuck just playing a bunch of eighth notes and it actually feels like we're in three, two or four, two. Um, the quarter note is constant in this, and that comes up when in the third line we switch to 3-4. So you want to think of uh, in the 4-2 measures at the beginning of the third line, start thinking 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1 and 2 and 3. That'll help you, uh, that's basically subdividing the line and that's gonna help you a lot as you make that transition. Um, judges will especially be looking for that to see if you can make the transition from the half note pulse to the quarter note pulse, okay. Um, on the second line, this is marked sostenuto, so it's really important that we get a really sustained style um, through the rest of that line. Definitely, we have a lot of slurs there and tenutos marked throughout that. And then one other thing, there is a ritardando marked right before the end of this, so make sure um, with the last two measures that we're really kind of pulling back tempo a little bit, including the triplet, ba -da -da -dum, bum, 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 so that we really slow down into that. A um, uh, couple other things on this one. Um, on the third line, uh, you, it's marked brillante, um, so that's that's kind of a showy uh, style there. If you can single tongue those sixteenth notes, you're going to have much more control. Uh, but double tonguing those may give you a little bit more comfort as you're playing this at the at the real tempo. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to mark really quickly is at the beginning of the third line, there's an SP, that's a subito piano. So make sure that we're bringing that down and then we're crescendoing over the course of line three. With number five, number five is actually one of my favorite ones. Uh, it's, it's really a, a dark etude. We're in five flats here, so kind of a tricky key signature. It's marked sotto voce, which means that basically we're, we're playing underneath um, where we would normally be playing. Um, so it's very uh, kind of dark and soft at the beginning here. Uh, so definitely watch out for all the flats uh, in this one because they're tricky. And I, I will be honest with you, it took me a while to get the, in the first measure here, we have a C flat that's marked. And then the last note that measure is actually another C. So make sure that we're getting a, another C flat in that. Um, watch the rhythm, uh, especially in the third measure, because uh, it's going to feel like you're holding that out too long, but it's actually three eighth notes long. I would strongly encourage you to count by the eighth note here. Think one and two and three and four and uh, as you're going through that. So when you get to that measure, which has a dotted quarter note, we're actually counting the three eighth notes in that measure. Um, with the uh, poco a poco affrettato e crescendo in the uh, second line, Second half of that, we're speeding up just a little bit and also crescendoing over the course of the second half of this. And then throughout this, uh, he has rhythms that are a little bit unusually looking. Um, like I'm specifically looking on the last line, second measure, he has uh, the high A flat followed by a 16th rest and then a 16th note. That is essentially a dotted eighth 16th with some separation in the middle. So don't let that confuse you. Um, it's, it's a rhythm that we're, we're familiar with, generally speaking. Um, also, I will just tell you that the A flat at the beginning of, uh, with number five, definitely we want to count the eighth note on this one. Uh, it's, it's very kind of uh, slow and it's uh, marked at quarter note equals 52. So you want to set your metronome at uh, eighth note equals 104 and that's going to be an easier count for you. So um, the rhythm is kind of challenging on this. At the beginning of it, it's marked sotto voce, which means we're going to stay underneath uh, kind of dynamically. Uh, it's gonna be soft basically at the beginning. Um, we're in five flats here as well. 
And I, I will be honest with you, there are extra flats in this that, that are going to be kind of tricky. In the first measure here, we have a C flat, and then there's another C at the end of the measure that's still flat because the flat carries through the measure. So watch out for that. Um, in the third measure here, we have uh, kind of a tricky rhythm here. The dotted quarter note, uh, especially if we're counting in the eighth note, remember that's going to be three eighth notes long. So make sure you're subdividing that. It's going to feel longer than you think it is, the half note, four eighth notes long. When we get to the end of the uh, first line, we have uh, A flat. Make sure we're getting that A flat. That's kind of a tricky flat to get. Um, and then on the second line, we have a poco a poco affrettato and crescendo. So we're actually uh, speeding up just slightly towards the end of the piece and uh, crescendoing throughout the, the kind of the second half of this. Um, also, one quick thing I wanted to mention, um, especially on the last line, but it's, it's throughout this. If you look at the, uh, the beginning of the second line, for instance, he has an eighth note followed by a sixteenth rest and a sixteenth note. So that's actually the same as a dotted eighth sixteenth. Basically, he's creating some separation between the first and the second note. So watch out for that. Uh, there is a molto rit, which means a very dramatic retardando, uh, the last three beats here. So make sure we are, are doing that. Um, generally speaking, I think the key signature is one of the hardest things here, so watch out for your D flats and G flats especially. Uh, it's, it's sometimes easier to think about the notes that aren't flat here uh, than it is to uh, focus on uh, keeping track of all five flats. Thank you so much for watching this today. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best in your audition endeavors. If I can be of any assistance, my email address is alex.manners at my.gcu.edu. Uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you at some point in the future, and once again, happy practicing. Thanks.